Father, we love you this. Only you that can raise a standard that the enemy cannot match. The Bible says when you open a door, no man can shut. We believe in you who is able to do it. In Jesus' name, take your seat in his presence. Glory to God. In this first service we dealt about, we talked about raising the standard. And the first point was challenge yourself to overcome the challenge. And number two, we said you must raise your expectation. And number three, which we are going to deal with in this service, you must break from every routine. From every monotonous routine. You must break from routine. Um, as much as discipline is good, to be able to do one thing all the time. Sometimes when you want to see something new, you must change your routine. You must change your routine. It must not be business as usual for you. There must be a change, an interruption in your routine for you to be able to encounter the power of God and for you to raise a standard. The 120 had to do something extraordinary. They had to wait in the upper room for several days until they had an encounter with God. Maybe you need to change your routine in prayer. You need to change how many hours you pray. You need to change how, when you pray. And you will realize as you do so, the standard will be raised. Maybe we need to change the routine of how we give. Maybe you, you are accustomed to give in a particular way. Change the way you give. And you will realize that anytime you change your routine, God is willing to raise a standard for you. Esther had to change the routine for God to intervene in her life. If you remember, it was not in the custom of queens to see kings voluntarily. But she said, I'm not a lady. I'm not a woman of routine. I am going to dare to do what others don't do. And the minute she did it, she entered into the book of records as one woman that corrupted with the king in a foreign land. You need to change routine. Sometimes you are so accustomed to a particular way until the enemy has mastered your strength. It is time to go undercover. Change your routine. Let the enemy try to guess what you're doing, but he will not be able to, do, to be able to predict. Tell neighbor, don't become too predictable. Come on, give your neighbor a high five and tell them, don't become too predictable. Some of us are too predictable. The same route you use is the same route you use. The same dress you wear on Monday is the same dress you wear on Monday. The same food you eat is the same food you eat. You need to change your diet for you to see different results. Hallelujah in the house. For you to be able to gain command in the realm of the spirit, you need to change routine. And religion is nothing else but routine. Religion is doing something without any effort. I've climbed it. I already know our Lord's prayer. Our Father is that in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. I don't even need any effort because it's a routine. Anybody who lives in routine lives a boring life. Tell anybody you need to get out of boredom. Create life within your life. Oh, hallelujah. It is not just enough to come to church. Come to church with an expectation that I know that even though I came on Sunday, I know it's not business as usual. The master is going to do something new. God is not a God of routine. He's a God of divine surprises. I pray that God will give you a surprise. The way he heals one man is not the way he heals another one. Why is your life so similar? Mm. May God introduce variety. <laughs> They already know. Madodo na chapati. They know. Tell you never God is changing your routine. They already know how you like your tea all the time. They know you like it to moderate. It is time to try something new. Until you venture into something new, you never know what is in the other side of the waters. I pray that you may grace, get grace to create new things. Tell you never I'm tired of routine. They are tired of routine. There are some guys in Mark chapter 2, they were tired of how people used to, to get through to Jesus. And they knew, if we try to use the routine route, we are not going to reach him. So they said, we are going to do something extraordinary. They, they dug a hole. They created a hole on the roof. And instead of coming from below, he came from above. May God give you a standard that the enemy cannot match. I can hear you. When they are waiting for you in the market, may they find you in the bank. When they are waiting for you at the grave, may they hear that you are somewhere preaching. Any trap of the enemy that is laid before you because of your routine, I deliver you in the name of Jesus. I deliver you in the name of Jesus. The day that they will put a charm on your door because they know you come at 2 p.m., I came to declare that day, God will give you another schedule and you are going to be in a different place. Shout amen! 
naswa hivyo hivyo. Romans 8:6 to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually to be spiritual is life and peace. Be as well. For carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The minute you become spiritual, it means that you do not interpret things from a human perspective. A spiritual man does not look at things the way other people look at them. They don't look at trials and temptations as an end to themselves. They look at it as a means to a next level. Ooh, Rabbi Handa. That's why the Bible says when you're tried, when you're tempted, do not think that it is God tempting you. A spiritual man understands God tempts no man. But a carnal man will say it is, it's God making me go through this. God has no evil to test you with. He only has good gifts. For if James 1.17, every good and perfect gift comes from him who is the giver, he is the father of all gifts. And in him there is no valuableness, no shadow of turning. Anytime God says he will bless you, he does not change his mind. But it takes a spiritual man to understand a spiritual message. In Kegoshan, the bishop talked about uh, three kinds of people, which is true. There is a natural man, a man who has, whose life has never been illuminated by the light of God. This man has never known Jesus. He's a natural man. He's as raw as he was born by Adam. We also have a carnal man. A carnal man is a religious man who has mastered the way we pray, who has mastered the way we sing, who has mastered even tithing, but they don't carry the spirit of God to drive them every day. I pray that in the name of Jesus, beyond the routine you have, that you shall carry the spirit of God. That is why the Bible is saying that it is the spirit of God that raises the standard against the enemy. There is what you need to do for you to come out of that situation. But it is only the Holy Spirit who is the teacher who can teach you what to do when. You may have done something different last year. But this year the spirit of God is telling you do another one. When you are a spiritual man you understand that the formula I used yesterday may not necessarily work today. The key that I used to open the door yesterday may not necessarily be the one I use today. Because this masses are new every morning. I pray that you shall become spiritual. How do you become spiritual? The Bible says in the book of Jude. That pray ye in the Holy Ghost. Building yourself in the most holy faith. If you are not baptized in the Holy Ghost. Pursue the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And if you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. Don't be settled by speaking in tongues. You only speak one sentence for a whole hour. You still can speak a paragraph. And you still can write a book. How do you do through practice? It is remaining strong even in the midst of the warfare. You are going through a warfare, but instead of people encouraging you, you are encouraging them. Tell you you shall be strong in the midst of your warfare. People will be encouraging you, but you will be hitting them back with scriptures. I know even though I'm down, the Lord shall raise me up. When they find your house closed, instead of allowing them to cry with you, you tell them the house is closed. But I know one time, I won't mind. Tell everybody you will be strong in the midst of your warfare. Mm, not the longer it takes for you to get your harvest the more precious the harvest is don't be a, don't be don't don't be a short razor in life sometimes there are things that god will allow there are people who will work so long in ministry before they break through the others will come two days and break through but i can assure you it is not that god is unfair god knows everybody's capability so if you continue giving and you're not seeing the harvest, don't stop. Tell me, but don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Tell them until they hear you, don't stop giving. Don't stop giving. Mm. The hardest person to give to many people except my own. My own is very good. Mother-in-law. Continue giving, they don't see. You continue giving. Tell me, but continue giving. You give and they say it has charms. <laughs> you give, they say it is too cheap. They give you, say you are wasting their son's money. They will, they will run out of vocabulary. Continue doing good. That's what the Bible says in Galatians. Do not be wary of doing good. For in due season, you will reap your harvest. If you don't, faint. If you don't, faint. <laughs>